Hello everyone, this is the Tubular Quad version 5, which is a FPV freestyle frame that I designed and built from scratch. In my previous video, I showed how I made this frame and I went over all of the design features. So if you're interested in the frame, please make sure you go watch that video. In this video, I'm going to be going over all of the electronics that I use and why I use them along with some of the extras that I have on this frame. But first, let's see the time lapse of me installing the electronics. Okay, I hope that you guys enjoyed that time lapse. Now let's go ahead and talk about the electronics and other components that I'm running on this frame. So I'm going to start from the outside and work my way in. First up are the arm bumpers. These are 3D printed TPU. And I'm usually against this kind of thing because they can get out of hand really fast and add a ton of weight to the end of the arms, right where you don't want it. However, on the tubular quad, I think it's rather necessary because when you're scraping against pavement, the ends of the arms get abraded away a lot faster than a carbon plate arm because there's so little carbon at the ends of the arms. These only add two and a half grams, so I think it's worth it. And I did have a problem with previous versions of the frame where these would just fly off in more severe crashes. So I've just added a dab of super glue in here to hopefully keep these on. Next up are the props. These are the Ethics K2 6x4 props. And these are actually manufactured by HQ but are sold under the brand Ethics. 
And in my recent Tim Talk, I talked about why I prefer six inch twin blades over five inch tri blades. But the gist of it is larger props are more efficient. Props with fewer blades are more efficient. And I generally prefer how six inch flies because it has really high grip because of the large disc area of the props. And it's quite fast as long as you run twin blades. And because of the efficiency, you get really long flight times. Moving on to the motors, these are the Hyperlite 2206 and a half 1922 KV motors. And first of all, the reason why I run Hyperlite motors is because the construction is extremely light. There's the hollow titanium shaft and all that stuff, the naked bottom, um, which you know, it's pretty standard these days, but these motors in particular have a much lower weight than most of the competition. I'm running the 2206 and a half stator size I have tried larger stator sizes up to 2207 and a half. However, I've found that at least on a quad like this, which is extremely light and has space between all the props, it's a true X and it has a really tight center of gravity, low moment of inertia because all the weight is in a tight ball in the middle. I found that those larger stator sizes don't really do much for response. And because the quad is so light, I don't need a ton of thrust either. So going with the smaller stator size just saves more weight. So I find it kind of hilarious that people on five inch are running 2207 and a half or 2306, but that might make sense if your quad is a lot heavier. Now the KV is also very low. It is 1922 KV on 4S. And the reason for that is once again, I don't need a lot of RPM to create a lot of thrust because the quad is so light. And by going with a lower KV, the th sensitivity of the throttle stick is lower, so it's just easier to control the quad. These motors are mounted on top of these custom 3D printed soft mounts that I designed and printed, and they match the shape of the base of the motor exactly, which saves maybe 0.1 grams, but more importantly, it looks really clean and it's really hard to tell that they're even there, which helps contribute to the really clean aesthetic of this quad in general because the motor wires run through the center of the arm so you can't see them at all which is probably my favorite feature of this design and the fact that the motor wires run through the arms also has a functional benefit because if you bend a prop or something there's no way for the prop to chop your motor wires moving on the stack is the hobby wing x rotor gen 3 stack so that consists of a 60 amp bl heli 32 4-in-1 esc which the 60 amps is totally overkill for what i'm doing and i actually have a gripe with this because the built-in bec is only half an amp so you cannot run your video transmitter off of the esc if you're running a 5 volt video transmitter in the first version of the 4-in-1 esc the current rating for the motors was a lot lower but the BEC was rated at 3 amps so you could definitely run a 5 volt video transmitter. But other than that I have no complaints about this ESC. I've actually ran all three generations of this stack and I enjoy how it performs. The flight controller is just an F4 flight controller, nothing special about it. And a nice feature of this stack which is pretty common in most new stacks is that it has these rubber grommets to soft mount both the flight controller and ESC. So everything on this quad is soft mounted. The video transmitter is the TBS Unify Pro high voltage because the ESC has a sad BEC. And I have fried a couple of these, but it was no fault of the transmitter itself. And the reason why I run this is because it has been very reliable for me and it's pretty light. And adding to that lightness is the TBS Dum Dum, which you can see this one is a little broken, but still works. And the Dum Dum has a UFL connector that plugs directly in to the video transmitter. And this saves a ton of weight compared to running a UFL to SMA pigtail and then running a SMA antenna. The receiver is the Lemon RX diversity satellite receiver. So yes, I do fly Spectrum. However, I do not trust Spectrum brand receivers anymore. However, I've had very good luck with these Lemon RX receivers and they actually were selling diversity satellite receivers before Spectrum themselves was selling 
diversity satellite receivers. Moving on to the front, the FPV camera is nothing special. It's a Foxier Aero Micro Pro. And the important things are it's a micro camera, so it's really light. And it is a CCD camera, so it has really fast response to changing light conditions. And it just has low latency in general. On top of the quad, I am running the China Hobby Line 4S 70C 1300 milliamp hour LiPo. And the reason why I run 4S and not 6S is because I have looked at the data from Mini Quad Test Bench and contrary to popular belief, 6S has no advantages in efficiency or motor torque. And I run 70C even though there is a 100C variant available because this quad only pulls around 80 amps at full throttle because of the low KV. So I don't need the extra C rating and it's very light. So I'm really not stressing the battery out very much. I usually get around four and a half minutes flight time with my normal freestyle flying. And then up front, we have the GoPro Hero 7 that is attached to a custom designed and 3D printed TPU GoPro mount. And for this version of the tubular quad, I have finally been able to do something a little more professional, which is be able to have the GoPro mount bolt directly to the frame. Whereas in the past it was zip tied on top and I've been able to do this for this iteration because there is the fifth standoff right here that I can use as a screw hole. So this GoPro mount in particular is extremely light. As you can see, there's not much to it. However, the previous version had the same shape and was plenty durable. This only weighs 12 grams. To give you some comparison, the GoPro mounts you can buy from Brain3D for the Hero 7 are 30 grams or more. So those are all the electronics and components that I'm running on this frame. And you can probably tell that I have a big emphasis on keeping the weight down. So let's talk about the weight of this quad. So the dry weight without the GoPro, without the battery is 330 grams. Adding on the GoPro 7 and the China Hobby Line 4S 1300, that brings the all up weight to 616 grams, which is super light and it makes this quad really responsive and gives it really good flight time as well. Now, if I were to run a Hero 5 session, that would bring the weight down to 573 grams, which is just crazy light, but I don't run a session, so that is not the actual all up weight. All right, that's it for this one. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and maybe you even learned a thing or two about my thought process when it comes to choosing components in order to end up with a really high performance and result. So if you did enjoy the video or you did learn something, please make sure to give the video a like and let me know down in the comments below what you think of this setup. Also, 84% of you guys watching this right now are not subscribed. So if you enjoy the content and if you don't wanna miss the future flight videos that are gonna be posted with this awesome setup, make sure that you get subscribed. In addition, I have a new Instagram page, timmy.r.c, where I post kind of more behind the scenes stuff. So for example, I posted a bunch of photos of the build of this frame. So if you wanna see that kind of content, make sure to go follow me on Instagram. Thanks for watching.